We know the math, the intrinsic value hasn't changed for the company, but does the psychology, the consumer sentiment around the stock change at all for you? Uh, yes, I mean, Taylor, I think that the idea of a split is to make the shares appear more affordable. And obviously institutions don't care, but individual investors do and employees do. Um, so it, it allows the company to be more appealing to individual investors. You know, and if you have you know, $10,000 to invest, are you gonna buy four shares of Amazon? You know, maybe not, but you might buy a hundred shares at 120 and spend 12,000. I think that's how they're thinking about it. Same with employee compensation. You know, I have a friend who went to work there and I remember they gave him 223 you know, shares of stock vesting over four years. And it was just really complicated. Um, they can push comp down now, stock-based comp down to even fulfillment center workers and truck drivers if they choose to. Um, because now they can give out stock in increments of, you know, say $120 instead of $2,400. So it really provides a lot more flexibility for investors who are individuals who want to buy one share and for employees who they want to compensate and keep motivated so they can give them one share. So I, I think the stock will probably go up on this. More importantly, though, this shows that management actually cares. Uh -huh. And I think they, they have a reputation, a very well-earned reputation for not caring about Wall Street. And this is oh. a very investor-friendly thing to do. So I think it's a signal from Andy Jassy, who has been absent as far as investors are concerned, that maybe he does care about the share price and we're going to see it start to go up. Very interesting. I am curious when you're thinking about management, exit today, Michael, the Amazon CEO of the Worldwide Consumer, Dave Clark, resigns. Are you thinking about Andy Jassy coming in, shaking up other sort of C-suite areas, the impact that that may have? You know, if, if you had to pick one area of Amazon that was not doing poorly, it was that one. So I, I would say that, you know, consumer has been great. Um, actually, they, they're great on everything they do on the revenue side. Um, where they're out of control is the expense side. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't think it is Dave Clark's fault or anybody else's fault. I think it's Jeff Bezos and Andy Jassy's fault because they have a bunch of skunk work projects that they're not going to tell us about. And they're investing a ton of money in things that may not pay off for 10 or 20 years. Um, I, I, as an example, I think Amazon Fresh self-service stores is just a ridiculously stupid idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't shop at Amazon so we can get in our car and drive to a store. And, you know, not having to deal with a clerk at checkout isn't the reason that I shop at Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I, I think these guys have a lot of spending cuts to make. I don't think Dave Clark was the guy to uh, to make those cuts. It's Andy Jassy. So he should be much more self, you know, introspective and be more self-aware and start worrying about what he's doing as CEO. Uh, the bigger problem is that they're losing employees up and down the, the ranks because they don't pay enough and they're being poached uh -huh. by competitors. So they, I, if they're going to get rid of somebody in the C-suite, get rid of the head of HR because that person has not done a good job. Interesting. Okay, so we're getting into some of the idiosyncratic issues within Amazon. But, Michael, I thought it was really interesting one of your counterparts, Brent Thill over at Jefferies. I think I spoke with him last week, and he said that sentiment on broader tech has never been worse. That they're doing backflips at the Exxon shareholders meeting, and you go to these tech conferences, and sentiment is horrible. Is a lot of this maybe sort of the broad sentiment around technology in general? Yeah, my, my largest personal holding is ExxonMobil, so I've been doing backflips as well. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, there's two types of tech. You know, there's tech that's not profitable. And so when you're paying a revenue multiple for, for companies like Unity, and I love Unity, you know, it's a genuinely great company, but they don't have profits. Um, there is no bottom. I mean, who knows how to value that thing? Uh, then there are tech companies like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, that are immensely profitable. Mm -hmm. And so it's really easy to kind of step in when you think they've gone down enough. And I think that where Jassy has control is he can say, I'm gonna take earnings per share up 10 bucks by slowing our spending on some of these projects that aren't gonna pay off for 10 years. If he does that, I think the stock has the potential to go right back to where it was. So you know, let's see what these tech leaders do, but the profitable companies should lead the rebound and the big guys tend to be pretty profitable.